Okay, we are ready to undertake mod podging an old bike. This is a 1960s bike that I got for 25 bucks here in town. It's in good shape. It's just really rough. And I could have painted it, but I don't have the equipment. And to be honest with you, I don't have the talent. So I decided to uh, Google, and I found a couple of people had Mod Podged their bikes. Kind of inspired me. Uh, I'm a quilter, so I have plenty of fabric. This is what I'm going to be using. I haven't quite decided where everything is going to go yet. For a bike this size, you'll probably need probably a yard. Uh, these are half yards I have here because I'm going with different uh, combinations. If you're going solid, you probably want to go ahead and, and um, get a yard of fabric at least. You will need these sponge brushes. I got them really cheap at Wally World. Two pairs of scissors. You'll want a good pair of scissors for cutting your fabric. And then you're going to want a really cruddy pair of scissors, an old pair of scissors, uh, to be cutting uh, the fabric that's already been sticky and Mod Podge. So uh, I actually have an old pair, but it doesn't cut anymore. So I went ahead and picked up a really cheap pair for $1.99 that I'll be using on the Mod Podged fabric. Now as far as the Mod Podge, there's uh, a special kind that you will need. And this is it right here. It's not the type I was able to find here in town. I ended up having to uh, order this through Amazon. If you live in a bigger city, then I imagine you might be able to get it. I live in a smaller town and I couldn't. This is Mod Podge Outdoor. It's not the regular. It's the green label Mod Podge. And uh, for a bike, they said between one and two bottles. And since I don't have it locally, I decided to go ahead and just get the two bottles. You might, if you have it locally, just get one, and then if you need to get another one, just go ahead and run and grab it. This is going to be the top coat, and this is Mod Podge hard coat, and this is what's going to make it waterproof. This is your water-based sealant, and this goes um, on the top. So I have two of the outdoor Mod Podge and one of the sealant. And that's kind of what I'm going to be using. I got the directions off of the internet. And um, what I'm going to do is show you as I go through it. I looked on YouTube for videos and all I found was a video of still photos. And they really didn't explain how to do it. So I'm hoping to make this more of a how-to on how to Mod Podge a bike. Let's talk a little bit about bike prep. What I did is, I didn't do all that much. This bike, I said, it wasn't in bad shape, but it had been sitting in a garage for a long time. Uh, the people we bought it from, the they're an older couple, and she said that her husband wouldn't let her ride a bike anymore, and so it had been sitting in the garage. So it had a lot of spider webs and stuff on it. And so what I did is, as I screamed, I used a shop vac and sucked up all the spider webs and everything that I can find. I did a good job with the, the crevice tool. And then I went ahead and gave it a, a, a good wash down. I used uh, the Mean Green, you can use any kind of a, of a cleaner. I just happened to have that here in the house and a sponge. And I gave it a good, a good wipe down, uh, trying to be careful not to get the chain or anything wet. I'm not a bike expert. So anything that I say, you know, take with a grain of salt, it's just what I'm doing. And now as far as prepping for the actual uh, Mod Podging, I did go ahead and I took off the brackets that held the speed and the brackets that were holding the hand brakes. I uh, scraped off these stickers here, this, this, this is an old 1969 Sears bike that was made in Austria. I scraped off the stickers that were kind of uh, sticking up. I figured that might interfere with uh, mod podging. Same thing in the front. Um, it has the old Sears sticker. I went ahead and the bottom was coming 
uh, loose. They had some other kind of stickers on top. I got as much as I could off. I figure I'll cover it all with, with the Mod Podge, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, now, if you are someone who likes to follow the rules, probably what you'll want to do is disassemble the bike to Mod Podge it. You're going to want to take off the fenders and the chain guard so that you can do a lovely, wonderful job of Mod Podging. Uh, I saw on a couple of places where you didn't have to, though it was recommended, and my personality is such that if it's not, you don't have to, but it's recommended, that means you don't have to, I'm not going to. So we'll see how it turns out. I figure... I have nothing to lose. The Mod Podge will make the fabric nice and soft. Um, if you have a pattern where it's going to show seams, you'll probably want to disassemble it. My pattern is going to be on purpose, kind of chaotic, and so I don't have to worry about matching and having it look perfect. The other thing is you probably will want to do this out in a garage area. Uh, I'm doing this in my unfinished basement. There is my dog kind of being nosy uh, because it is right now um, about 5 o'clock at night and it's 106 degrees here in Kansas and it's probably 6 to 10 degrees even warmer in my garage. I have an unfinished basement uh, room here. It doesn't matter if I get stuff on the floor. I have my table. I have an old work table covered. Um, it, there is going to be a fan in here, so I'm not too worried about it, but, you know, for safety rules, you may want to go out in your garage and do it. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start measuring and looking at my fabric. Okay, ready to start the process. What I did is I used, got a tape measure, I had an old tape measure here at the house, and I went ahead and I measured the diameter of this pole here. I'm just going to do it one at a time. I'm not going to assume that they're identical. So I'm just doing this pole. I'm starting with this pole. And I measured. Uh, what was hard for me is trying to decide do I want to do the long um, poles first and then do this front piece or do the front piece first. Kind of figured I think I'm going to go ahead and do the long pieces first and then do the front piece, but I did go ahead and I did the measuring for the front piece. Uh, the directions I had seen said nothing about making a pattern, but I, I'm a quilter, and I may be kind of laissez-faire when it comes to the bike, but when it comes to fabric, I am pretty serious about it. So what I did is, um, I have plenty of this kind of a newsprint paper, I'm a classroom teacher, and uh, I made a pattern for the front. And all I did really was nothing fancy. I just uh, figured out that this was about five and a half inches uh, long, about five and a half inches in diameter. So I cut out a five and a half by five and a half uh, piece of paper. And then what I did is I laid the piece of paper up against uh, the bike frame. And with my fingernails, kind of like this, it's kind of hard to do this and hold the camera at the same time, I just pressed the pattern in. And it's, it's going to give. The fabric is going to give when it gets wet, so it doesn't have to be exacting. But this is about what I came up with. And I will go ahead and I will cut out that piece. I'll probably measure it again one more time. Uh, with, with quilters, we always said, uh, if you measure twice, cut once. I'll measure it again to make sure it is still fitting. But for right now, I went ahead, I did measure this piece. I decided I was going to um, do, like I said, I want, I want this bike to be funky. I don't want it to be, it's not going to be especially um, pretty and feminine. Uh, it's going to kind of reflect my personality a little bit bold. And so I thought having the stripes this way would look really sharp and then have the polka dot pattern uh, in the front. Haven't decided what I'm going to do with the other parts yet, but I thought those two, that'll look good. I'll probably have the bottom bar will also be in this stripe print. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start putting it on. When I looked at the directions that I did find on the internet, uh, they said to uh, put the fabric face down, wrong side up. 
so I'll flip it this way on my table and then I will apply the outdoor Mod Podge with one of those sponge brushes all across here kind of like almost like I was doing old-fashioned wallpaper and I'm also going to paint the section of the bike so I will paint here with the Mod Podge Mod Podge and then paint here with the Mod Podge and then apply it. I'm going to have it so that the seam is running underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a try. Alright, I have the first bar covered. It really did help to have that, the second layer, the Mod Podge on the bike. It helped kind of for it to slip around and now it did take nicely. I have the seam underneath. You don't cover the whole thing with Mod Podge right now. Uh, you just do cover though the seam. Wherever you have your seam, you want to put a nice layer of Mod Podge over it to kind of seal that seam. We'll be covering the whole thing a little later. But for right now, that's all we need. And, and I like it. I kind of think it looks funky. I'm going to go ahead and work now on the second bar. Okay, I have both of those main long poles covered of the bike frame. What I'm finding is I don't have to give as much as a seam allowance as I thought. I've been giving about probably half an inch and probably needs a lot less than that. Uh, it really is a lot of give in the fabric that I'm using and once it gets wet uh, I wanted to be careful that I didn't have too much uh, that was seaming under there, but I'm real pleased with it. When you do the decoupage, when you do the, the Mod Podge, you're going to find that it's going to be dark and lots of white spots on it at first because, of course, it's still wet, but it'll dry clear. So, so far, these two are done. Now I'm going to go ahead and tackle adding the piece up here. And uh, just to kind of let you know, I I did tell a lie. I fibbed. I ended up taking the chain guard off. Uh, I found it was going to be too hard to uh, get that bottom piece on. That bottom piece done with the, with the chain guard. And I was hesitating. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was. And it wasn't. It was very easy to take off. So I took off the chain guard. I'll probably, I will be Mod Podging that separately. And then I'll put that back on. But taking it off just made it easier. I am not though going to take off these fenders. They're really in there good uh, and I'd have to do a lot of disassembling to get those off. Okay, I've got that front piece on and I'm really pleased. I think it looks, I, I love the way it looks. Uh, I was really worried about it. I just was kind of wondering how I would get these to meet and not look bad. But uh, I'm real pleased. I think it looks good. You can see here, of course, the this is the seam, so it's quite wet. And this will all dry clear. I didn't cover the silver. I just covered uh, the part that was originally the, the black with the scuff and the rust on it. So, so far so good. I'm, I'm pleased. It, I have not run into any... Our roadblocks yet, fingers and toes and eyes crossed. Okay, well I have the back here and the front and the side bars. So the main frame is basically done. This long pole here, I did end up having to uh, do it in a couple of pieces, but luckily the pattern is so busy that it's really hard to see unless you know what you're looking for. Um, it really blended nicely, I thought. And of course, it's going to have quite a bit of drying to do. What I'm going to be doing next is trying to decide what pattern I'm going to uh, do the fenders and the chain guard in. But so far, so good. It is messy. It's going to be one of those projects that you definitely don't want to wear uh, anything nice. I have on an old old shirt, pants, old sandals, 
And uh, if you're someone who didn't like playing it with glue, the Elmer's glue when you were a kid, you will hate this project. But me, I'm enjoying it. It's been fun so far. Okay, update. I did get the back fender. This also took two pieces. I had to do it in two sections because of the way it is back here, but the pattern that I had selected uh, worked out real well. You really can't, you can't see the seam. Even I have to look closely and I know where the seam is, but that came out really nice. Here in front is the um, chain guard, also in that fireworks pattern. I'll put that on later on, but uh, it's all still quite wet. You have to be careful. One thing I did notice is if you're working on one area, be sure not to accidentally touch uh, another area. Even You might think it's, I thought it was dry and the fabric slipped because it hadn't quite set yet. But uh, so far I'm pleased. It, it looks good. That took quite a long time, that back fender. And so I still have the front fender to do. And then we will uh, be on to the actually the next step of Mod Podging your bike. This all has been uh, after the preparation, the cutting the fabric, putting all of these pieces on have been just one step of the process. We have quite a few more steps to go to make sure that this stays uh, waterproof. Okay, got the front fender has now been finished. So we have all of the main parts completed. I'm going to go ahead and just because I can, I'm going to apply some fabric here along that spoke, probably this spoke, and I'm trying to decide whether or not just to leave this black. I might leave it black. The uh, black paint is not looking too bad on this one. Let me take the other side. Yeah, actually it looks pretty good, so I just may go ahead and leave that black and just get that back spoke. What will happen is when I'm done putting the fabric on, I need to let it set for a couple of hours to dry. Then I'm going to come back and put another uh, layer of Mod Podge over everything. You don't Mod Podge over everything until you are done. Uh, you let it set for a couple of hours, then come back and then Mod Podge over everything. And um, I'll be back then. Okay. Well, I placed all the fabric where I wanted it to be. Let it dry for several hours. And then I went ahead and I've just applied a nice layer of the Mod Podge, the outdoor Mod Podge, all over the fabric. See, all over the fabric. I'm going to go ahead now and let it dry overnight and then in the morning I will go ahead and apply the uh, Mod Podge hard coat. And then the uh, what I've seen on the internet is apply it, let it dry, uh, apply another, let it dry, and then depending upon if it's still tacky or for me because I'm going to be using this outdoors um, I'm going to probably apply a third coat of the uh, hard coat let it dry then when it's all done and I'm hoping that that will be maybe in uh, tomorrow night I will put the uh, chain guard back on put the uh, 
clip back the uh, cords or whatever they're called for the three speed and for the brakes the cables and uh, tighten up everything that needs to be tightened up I know the the seat is loose and hopefully take her for a spin but that's how it looks so far and I can honestly say if, if, if you are at all handy or if you enjoy artsy craftsy kinds of things go ahead and give this a try I think this would be really cute to do um, I enjoyed it for my bike I think it'd be a lot of fun for a kids bike it's just a good way to recycle rather than getting rid of a bike because it's it's uh, scuffed up or maybe you don't care for the color scheme anymore just go on ahead and and Mod Podge it I will do one more brief video and show you the final product Okay, this is the final product. Okay. Well, this is how to mod, mod podge a bike. I started at about 5 o'clock, worked pretty solid through until about 11.30, and let it dry, then um, applied, the applied a uh, coat of Mod Podge, the outdoor Mod Podge, over all the fabric, let it dry overnight, and then... Uh, Three times I applied the Mod Podge hard coat, each time letting it dry thoroughly in between. And I think it came out pretty good. You know, there were there were some areas I can see where I probably could have improved, but it sure looked a lot better than the $25 bike that I had purchased a couple of days ago. I'm going to have um, my husband take a, a look over the way I connected up my cables, make sure I did that right, I didn't loosen everything, but I think it looks pretty sharp. Not bad, $25 bike, Mod Podged. If you have any questions, be sure you um, leave them in the comments section, and I'll try my best to answer them. Bye.